to listen to the Dr. Dahlia Show. Sassy, stimulating medical talk radio. Any medical advice Dr. Dahlia Wax gives on her show should not be substituted for an actual visit to your medical provider. And now, here's Dr. Dahlia. Dr. Dolly, your show. Thank you all for tuning in. 1 877 Doc Dolly, 1 877 D O C D A L I. So, if you are frustrated with the industry in which you work or seeing how the government operates and you think things are pretty halfway, half assed, I, I don't blame you. I mean, in medicine, we have seen things that should have never happened and we have checks and balances and quality assurance, but still, some people don't do their job, and I am seeing mistakes made, and people just do things that are completely halfway. Well, with the Secret Service Director Cheadle resigning today, which was long overdue, I had wanted her to wait until she could at least give us some answers, but she didn't give us any answers in the congressional hearing, so goodbye. But this brings up the conversation, how much longer are we going to put up with half-assed? How much longer? What happened with the assassination attempt on President Trump was such a grossly negligent cluster of of uh, that you you just wonder one who's running things two are are people who are running things trying to do the right job but they're kept being told no I mean thank God for those secret service agents that jumped on the president to protect him, and they put their lives on the line. God bless them. But Corey Copertori, Copertori uh, other individuals were hurt. Um, Corey was killed. And the Secret Service has a job with a $3.1 billion annual budget. And so when things go wrong, I understand there's this anger game and this finger pointing and somebody needs to be fired. I don't want somebody so much fired as much as I want it fixed. If if somebody had asked the Secret Service director for extra resources and she said no, why? Why did she say no? Is it because when she asks her boss, it's no? Is it because Biden doesn't provide support? Is it because she really didn't think so? Is it because she didn't care? Was she busy watching? I don't know. You know, we aren't getting a lot of answers. She was very, very vague. And uh, it, it starts to make you wonder of a, a cover up. One of the congressmen had said, or one of the, um, the, uh, legislators at the hearing had said, look, you know, because this happened, you looked incompetent. If the, if the assassin was successful, you would be culpable. And so I don't want the conversation circulating that this was such a debacle. This was so bad that it was planned. I don't want the conversation that where nobody could be that dumb. No agency could be run that bad. I uh, no no but uh, they you know they said the sloped roof and I guess uh, somebody had gone on the roof and said we're we're walking along this fine that that's not an excuse I mean we it, what ends up happening is either people think there is such gross incompetence with either that agency or that industry or that that department or was it on purpose and we're not going to get answers from her she showed up she was vague and then she quit. Now, I know there's an investigation, and I think it's going to take 60 total days to get any answers. And I understand investigations could be a while, but we, we, I'm, I'm sure they could derive some conclusions before then. But I keep seeing this time and time again. People are half-assed. There used to be a work ethic, and you used to want to in that factory do your job. You did, you wanted to, you know, raise your kids well. You wanted to teach a student to be the best student they could be. And I have seen, and I have worked in multiple industries where half-assed is the norm. And when somebody says, look, something's wrong, we need to fix this, they get quieted or they get fired. And when other people see this, they they stay quiet too. Well, if everybody's going to stay quiet, uh, then no wonder nothing gets done. 
Yeah, the Secret Service has to still protect Biden, has to protect Kamala Harris, has to protect their families, has to protect Trump, his family, and and uh, as well as other dignitaries that come close to them. They're, they, what, they cannot be half-assed. Our hospital infrastructure cannot be half-assed. Our civil engineers, our our uh, NASA, or, or I mean, uh, across all industries, whoever's making the baby formula, nothing could be half-assed. And we've let that happen. Is it because we're understaffed? I, the Secret Service had a $3.1 billion budget, and she was saying we're going to try to hire more. I mean, that sounds like a lot of money. A lot of money. Especially since they're not buying ladders to go up on roofs and double-check potential shooters so they have extra money to spend why aren't they fully staffed is it that people don't want to work is is it I, I, you know there's obviously a uh landscape and a very common uh behavior and a common pattern that i have seen and i've worked in multiple industries including the government in academia in retail in restaurant in medicine and I keep seeing this half-ass pervade. It shouldn't be the norm. But it is. And when you want to do a good job and you're like, hey, this needs to be done, this needs to be fixed, everybody tells you to be quiet. Well, this is what happens when you tell people to be quiet. Not only was Trump's life on the line, but attendees. We lost people. Not to mention Biden's life is on the line. Harris's life is on the line. Our democracy is on the line. And this isn't some covert, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, highly trained military specialist that did. This is some 20 year old punk, which also starts to question what what exactly happened. And so her resigning is a good thing, but it's not satisfying. Because if the same cancer exists. And the same pathology exists of being half-assed and not doing one's job and shutting up so you don't get fired and just collecting a paycheck, then, uh, uh, sadly, this stuff could keep happening. 1-877-DOC-DOLLY, don't go away. Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into, and that's MediShare. Maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save the typical family 500 bucks a month, and that's huge, but it's also true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The customer satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan, double MediShare works. It's been around for more than a quarter century, and members have shared more than $3 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want to plan you're happy with, you can call right now and get a price within two minutes. A very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. 855-SHARE-40. That's 855-SHARE-40. 855-SHARE-40. Hey guys, it's Dr. Dahlia. Fantasy football season is coming, but sadly, too many of you are taking the bench while the country takes part in one of the most exciting and lucrative industries out there. Don't know how to play? Well, huddle up and listen. Paul Kalikas and I have written a fantasy football pocket guide for beginners. This book walks you through the basics and shows you how simple and lucrative joining or creating a fantasy football team can be. Read our Fantasy Football Pocket Guide for Beginners found on Amazon or follow the links on X and Facebook. That's Fantasy Football Pocket Guides for Beginners. Don't be left out. In a study, it was found that 33% of 44 herbal supplements had no trace of the advertised herb. Don't let that happen to you. Hi, this is Dr. Mitch. If you want to ensure quality, please go to TotalWellness.com. Supplements made for physicians, only now available to you too. TotalWellness.com, helping you to look good, feel good, and enjoy Total Wellness. All right, we 
are back on the Dr. Dolly Show. Thank you all for tuning in. one 877 doc Dolly one 877 D O C D A L I. Big thanks to Talk Media Network for making the show happen. Big thanks to Daniel, our producer, and big thanks to y'all for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at X. Dr. Dahlia Show, Twitter on Dr. Dahlia. I know it's a new name. Facebook, the Dr. Dahlia Show, and on YouTube, click like and subscribe. So our mental health obviously should be a focus, and I love how we're starting to focus more on our mental health. But with the way politics have been and and uh, the disarray that we're seeing right now, I had posted earlier today that my five-year plan you know, people always talk about their five-year plan and where they're going to be in five years and what they're going to do financially. I'm just kind of trying to get through the next five months. I'm trying to get through the next five weeks, the next five days. And so knowing, and I said 2024 is going to be a stressful year. 2023 was stressful, 2021. But these, these election years are always stressful. You have a growing population of the never newsers or the news avoiders to help with their mental health. And I'm meeting more and more people who say, I just, I haven't picked up a newspaper or I haven't read or watched the news now in months. Is that a good idea? Or is it a bad idea? Now, it is a fantastic thing to say if you do not want to get in a conversation about politics. I, I, the, I would, you know, if you are at, at a family event and you know that there's going to be mixed, uh, you know, mixed, um, ideologies and you don't want to lose family or friends because people are taking politics too gosh darn seriously saying, I stopped watching the news. I don't know what's going on. I don't want to. I got so much to focus on. Yeah, it's not very satisfying. It might disappoint them a little because some people really want to argue or feel validated or whatever. But you know what? It buys you some time. You're not going to get rejected from the family. You're not going to get rejected from that friend group. You're not going to get fired. So the, the idea of I don't watch the news could maybe save you and buy you some time. It's not going to be very believed, well believed, because it's very hard to not know what's going on. I'm very mixed on the shutting off news completely or not. I think temporarily it might not be a bad idea. I think you could regroup, you know, watching the, the, the footage of Trump almost getting killed, very anxiety producing. Watching the Democrats in chaos, you know, is it going to be Kamala? Do we support Kamala? Is Kamala now, who's been the brunt of so much criticism this whole time, now going to be our next commander in chief? And I, I get it. it's it's the Democrats. If you're a Democrat, not an easy time. Yeah, uh, and, and so you saying, you know what, this weekend, I'm just going to shut it down. I'm just going to take a break. I'm just going to. Yeah. Um, and. I think that's okay. In terms of being a never newser, I don't think that's safe overall. We just spoke about that Listeria outbreak that um, has already killed two. Um, uh, It's associated with deli meats. You know, for your health, if we're looking at your health, you do need to kind of know what's coming around the bed. You do need to know if a hurricane is coming. You do need to know if there's going to be a heat wave. If you are asthmatic, you do need to understand if there's going to be higher pollen levels. And where I am very frustrated is when our state legislature passes things without us even knowing about it. They made it public, but if you're not actively looking, you just don't know. And so things that have to do with your health or your health care, or, uh, you know, or it can, you know, be at risk if you're not involved. And so sticking your head in the sand might seem temporarily to be a great way to, you know, recover and to, you know, when you isolate, but it's not something we commonly in psychology recommend. So if you have a loved one that dies, we don't tell you to just forget about it, to just avoid the funeral, to just go and watch Netflix. We actually tell you to deal with it, to go to the wake, to go to the funeral, to sit Shiva, to talk to people about it. 
because you need to work through it. And so I'm a little nervous on, on what I'm seeing people do because another thing that is very shocking to your mental health or to your system is shock. So when people come to find out, wait a second, Medicare doesn't pay for this anymore? Or I can't get an abortion here? Or I have, a, a, when you, a, then there's this panic. And one thing that I think is very, very safe and healthy for mental health is preparation. That's why some of these preppers, it's a fine line between saying they have a mental health issue with hoarding versus being prepared. You know, when, when stuff rolls downhill and you're like, it's okay. I got water. I got food. I got ammo. I got a gun to protect my, me and my family. We're good. There's that sense of relief. Same thing when a family member is sick. And, you know, you're, you're, uh, uh, me- oftentimes your medical provider will be very honest about prognosis to help prepare you. When my dad died at the drop of a dime and we weren't expecting it, we were all in shock. Now, I was in less shock because I know he wasn't taking care of himself. I just didn't think he was going to have a massive coronary uh, uh, as young as he did, but he did. And so the shock is what really throws people off. And so there's a fine line between shutting it off and not watching all this BS, but being prepared. Now, the answer to that is we wouldn't need to have never newsers or news avoiders if we had a very honest, neutral news source. If there was a news source that gave you the news without the BS, you wouldn't have people needing to avoid it. I mean, I think it's very important to know that our current president is not going to rerun for uh, uh, another term. <clears throat> you do need to know who is going to be running against Trump for president. I, I think these are things you do need to be aware of. It might anger you. It might frustrate you. You might not like the candidates on either side. You might love one, hate another. But you do need to be aware. You don't want to wake up one day and see Kamala Harris your president, if that's not who you want, or Trump your president, if that's not who you want. So um, you and you also need to be aware of crime in your city, you know, in terms of safety and health. I, I sometimes turn it off because I don't want to hear that there was another homicide or there was another pedestrian that was run over or there was another rape or another. I don't want to hear it, but I got a family to protect. And if we're in La La Land thinking we're walking down Main Street Disneyland every day, we're going to be at risk. I think there was a woman in Paris for the Olympics, one of the uh, spectators who was just gang raped. I mean, you, we, I, that, that is not easy. You know, especially for any of us who were assaulted, it is not easy to hear about something like that. But if you are thinking that going to you know, the Olympics is go, everything's going to be protected and safe, it, it might not be. So you have to find a balance between getting the news, being aware, understanding there's a car recall. And your car may have a safety defect. You have to somehow get your news, but in a way where it's not biased, it's not triggering, and they're not wasting your time with BS. You don't need to be on your news feeds all day long. You could very easily get your news in the morning, get some updates in the afternoon, get some updates at night, and then have a prop that gives you some breaking news. My local news three, uh, uh, NBC local news three, KSNV gives fantastic updates. No bias. No, I get an alert from them. They tell me some great, um, just what I need to know if, if I'm not looking at the news at that time. And it's very helpful. And so find one of those apps or one of those news sources that you're comfortable with. But we used to have newspapers where they would come in the morning, you would read your news, maybe there were, and then you'd have your NBC or your, or your nightly news, CBS nightly news, whatever, that'd be the nightly news. So you get your news in the morning, you get your news at night, and then of course, if there was any breaking news, there would be a preempt of your local TV show. Now it's ridiculous, it's all over. It's all over all day long, 
And and not to mention it's clickbait and there's ads. So I get it. I I get it. And and so I, I just I wouldn't be a never newser. What I would do is say, look, I got the news I needed to, and now I'm shutting the crap off. And I understand news has now become entertainment. You have these celebrities and these personalities. Yeah, if you don't want them, don't watch them. The ratings will go down, and they, you know, I, I mean, you, you don't have to keep it on because you're expecting news. Find a news source that where you really like the news you're getting. One eight seven seven Doc Dolly, don't go away. Dahlia here. Are you tired, burned out, gaining weight, succumbing to the daily pressures of life? Well, how's your dopamine doing? How you feel right now, how you'll feel an hour from now, and how you'll feel next week is completely reliant on your dopamine. Our daily motivation and willingness to push through challenges depends on the intricate chemical process dopamine provides. Christian Kalikas and I created Deploying Dopamine, a book that tells you what dopamine is, when it dysfunctions, and how to successfully deploy it when needed. Find Deploying Dopamine on Amazon today. Check it out. At Hot Shot Secret, we share the science behind common diesel problems. For example, diesel fuel cetane levels. The cetane rating in diesel fuel is 42 to 45. Most diesel engines operate more efficiently with a cetane rating of 48 to 50. One treatment of Hot Shot Secret Diesel Extreme will raise your cetane 7 points, increase fuel economy, and improve cold starts. Hot Shot Secret Diesel Extreme is available nationwide at truck stops, fine farm and auto stores, and online at hotshotsecret.com. Hot Shot Secret, powered by science. We are back on the Dr. Dahlia Show. Thank you all for tuning in. one 877 doc Dolly one 877 So one of my favorite things to do is mixing medicine and history. And I think it, it I just, I, I love history. Uh, I also love looking at the medical recommendations. I apologize, getting a little breaking news there. I also like looking at the Bible. And the medical sort of recommendations you know, that, that the Bible offered. It might have been in the under commandments or in laws, uh, but a lot of them in Leviticus, if you notice, are very medically or the secondary gain is it's healthier, so to speak. So, for example, uh, in the Bible, when a woman who was menstruating was... Um, you men were not supposed to sleep with them as they were quote unquote unclean the unclean wasn't necessarily a shame issue it was the telling men you can't touch things that are unclean unclean was a term they used and maybe through the translation it sounds like unclean but something that and not the word not the term forbidden but something that would cause harm so don't well, go there. And it it protected women who were in pain because they were cramps and menstruating. It would protect men from bloodborne illness and being exposed to blood. And also for the um, thinking during that time of sex being more procreational and recreational, uh, it reminded people that you aren't going to necessarily be able to get pregnant uh, you could still get pregnant if a woman does ovulate while on her period, but if a cycle is working textbook, um, usually during their week of menses, it's a lot harder to get pregnant. And so some of the, these rules were more of a medical issue. So I, and I just like with kashrut and the rules of kosher, avoiding shellfish. Well, shellfish had a dorsal vein that would have a poison, and there's poisons that that could commonly be um, obtained from not eating cooked shellfish or shellfish correctly. Uh, pork, undercooked pork, could also give you a parasite. And so when pork was unclean or shellfish unclean, those were ways to protect people. 
Now, rather than the Bible saying, look, you could get trichomoniasis, you could get, what, what is it, cigarette poisoning? It's easier for them to say it's unclean, don't go there. So, that I, I just, I want to study that more, write a book on that. It'll be coming. But um, in light of what's been going on with Biden, there have been a lot of discussions on the health of prior presidents. Now, I wrote a small piece on the health of the presidents. And um, Fox News has also talked about this, but I, I wrote a piece before where we talked about George Washington. George Washington suffered from diphtheria, tuberculosis, malaria, smallpox, dysentery, tonsillitis, epiglottitis, possible sterility. There has been some postulation that George Washington and Abraham Lincoln might have had syphilis, but I can't verify that. In fact, George Washington only had one original tooth by the time he became president, and his teeth were made of wood. Oh, no, not made of wood. They didn't use wood. They used, uh, like, uh, ivory, um, hippopotamus, walrus, elephant ivory, um, or transplanted teeth. And so uh, there's, uh, uh, yep. I talked about James Garfield, Thomas Jefferson. I'm going to want to have a little bit more time going to that, but I want to review what Fox News is talking about um, because they have some very interesting insights that I haven't given you uh, yet uh, over the course of my show. So Chester A. Arthur, the 21st president between 1881 to 1885, he was America's 21st president and he experienced health complications from malaria. Malaria had remained endemic in D.C. throughout the 19th century. He had fatigue, extreme weight loss, peripheral edema, and he was diagnosed with Bright's disease. Bright's disease is a form of chronic kidney disease. His health worsened in his last two years of office. He had fluid retention. He had rigors, which is shaking and shivering, nausea, colicky, abdominal pain. And when the 1884 election inched closer, he did seek a second term. But he lost the Republican nomination to James Blaine, Speaker of the House. Blaine ended up losing the election to Grover Cleveland, who was a Democrat. Arthur ended up dying, I think, a year after leaving office at the age of 57, according to the Smithsonian. Teddy Roosevelt. So uh, Teddy Roosevelt is fascinating. I had talked about how he had. um, Let me see if I have. um, um, Well, you know what? Let me get there. Uh, now, not letting me pull up mine, but Teddy Roosevelt, 26th president between 1901 and 1909. He took over as commander in chief when he was only 43 years old. This was after the assassination of William McKinley. Roosevelt then got reelected in 1904. After William Howard Taft's term, which began in 1909, Roosevelt decided to rejoin the race. Now, remember, because he took over during the assass- after the assassination, he still was able to run another term. While campaigning, he got shot <clears throat> during an assassination attempt. This was outside the Gilpatrick Hotel on 1912, October 14th in Milwaukee. The bullet was slowed by his very dense overcoat. He had steel-reinforced eyeglass case, as well as his 50-page speech folded in the inner right jacket. This is according to history.com. The bullet did puncture his chest, did not damage his lungs, lodged inside his ribs. They felt it was safer to leave it there rather than operating. He did continue to campaign, but was beaten by Woodrow Wilson in the 1912 election. Now, Woodrow Wilson ended up having a neurological condition that caused him to suffer from strokes. Before he took office, three strokes affected his right hand and left arm. He was blind in his left eye. Then a damaging stroke happened while he was president, which we spoke about. This happened in October, I think, of 1919. He was paralyzed on the left side with only partial vision on his right. He was confined to his bed for several weeks. We have been, it's been postulated that his wife ran things. In 1920, Republicans requested confirmation that he was still able to carry out his duties. The president's doctor would not publicly comment. Wilson pursued re-election for a third term. By the time the Democratic convention that summer, according to Fox News, the doctor shared Wilson's poor medical state with party leaders. They rejected the idea of a third term 
and he was not given the presidential nomination. Oh, yes. Also, by the way, the third term um, rulings, uh, the third term limitations didn't happen until I think after FDR. So now FDR. FDR is the only U.S. president to serve more than two terms in office. He was elected four times throughout the Depression and World War II. He had suffered health issues. Um, That's interesting. Now the polio was being debated. They say he got polio, but um, as we had talked about, there might have been a spinal cord injury that he actually had when he was younger. But he was 39 years old at the time, and he also had heart disease. He had a uh, melanoma above his left eyebrow. And throughout 1944, Roosevelt's team of doctors monitored his weight and health, looked at his high blood pressure. He had a horrible high blood pressure. But we believe now that he might have died from melanoma. Um, and and that's what caused the brain bleed as opposed to the high blood pressure. But he did have heart complications, and he wasn't a very healthy man. He was chosen as the Democratic nominee in 1944, continued his campaign. He won his fourth presidential election, but in 1945, he complained of a headache to his physician. They say his blood pressure was 300 over 190. He lost consciousness and was diagnosed with a stroke, died at the age of 63. Now they're saying that some of the that the melanoma could have spread to his brain and also have caused a bleed. So Dwight D. Eisenhower, he had a heart attack, I think. Uh, he began his first term in 1953, suffered from two major illnesses. He had a heart attack in September 1955. He was out of the White House for recovery until December. Then he got clearance, ran for re-election. Then he got Crohn's disease, and he was re-elected for a second term. Uh, sadly, in 1957, he suffered a stroke. But he still fulfilled his presidency. One eight seven seven Doc Dolly. Considered by most, optimized curcumin is one of the few bioavailable and highly absorbable curcumin products on the market. Hi, I'm Dr. Mitch. Since most chronic diseases have inflammation, our optimized curcumin seems to be a perfect addition to any nutritional program. It makes sense to me that preventing or reducing inflammation is a key component to our overall health. The Mayo Clinic found that curcumin can decrease swelling and inflammation, has antioxidant properties, and research suggests that curcumin can prevent cancer, or at least slow the spread of cancer, and in many instances make chemotherapy more effective. It protects our healthy cells even from radiation. TotalWellness.com, where we help you to look good, feel good, and enjoy Total Wellness. Self-reliance. It's not a phrase we hear much in our culture these days. It might conjure up images of pioneers, the West, rifles, strapping men, and strong women. But what does it mean for us in today's world? The New American Magazine has just released its latest collector's edition, Self-Reliance, Foundation of Freedom. In it, the New American authors outline the necessity of self-reliance for a free people, tips for self-reliant living, and the importance of not giving up hope. This unique edition includes articles on the self-sufficiency of the founders, preparing for a worst-case scenario, firearms, financial self-reliance, the importance of community, and many other topics by expert writers. Now, for a limited time, The New American is offering a bundle of three collector's editions, Self-Reliance, The Great Reset, and Trump World, for just $19.95. Available at shopjbs.org. Visit shopjbs.org today. All right. We are back on the Dr. Dolly Show. Thank you all for tuning in. one 877 one 877 Miranda writes, why aren't more people talking about how Kamala Harris's ancestors were slave owners? So um, I, uh, we take any question here, and I'll try to answer it the best I can. And I do love uh, political strategy and the psychology of that. And, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll answer any question. I don't know why, but I, I do have an opinion on that matter. You know, um, I, I didn't really look too much into Kamala Harris's history because um, even though I did predict that 
uh, Biden was going to bow out um, and elevate her to president um, within the first term, not saying she would be elected as president. But I, I knew that somehow we were going to be possibly looking at a President Harris, um, which I understand stressed out a lot of people. I get that. But I just didn't think Biden was going to be able to finish out his first term. I was really nervous from a health standpoint. Um, you know, I, I didn't really necessarily study her. And I just because I didn't think she was qualified to be where she is now because she got you know, she lost in the primary and she lost pretty badly. So um, I, I'm still learning as I go, as I think a lot of us are. But from what I, I we're, we're hearing, and again, I we have to be really, really careful when you have ancestors that you had nothing to do with, you couldn't stop, you couldn't prevent, you could, it's, it's, I think it's very difficult to blame current people for something that a relative did a long time ago. Uh, so I, I don't think it's going to, yeah, I, I, yeah. It, that's kind of why it's been really troubling now trying to figure out what to do with reparations. Do those who got killed in the Holocaust because their family tried to escape to America and were turned away, do people living now get reparations? Do individuals whose uh, you know family enslaved their great 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 grandfather do they get reparations? Um, uh, you know it's 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 a, it's a tough discussion because there there's an argument for a lot of people getting a lot of reparations, and where do you cut it off? Where do you cut off the line? And then does somebody who immigrated here made it here? Now, do their tax dollars have to go to those reparations? Who pays the reparations? If somebody stole land from somebody or wouldn't let an individual get land because of the race, is the person and their descendants who wouldn't let them get that land, who took it instead, do they pay the reparations? So we have to figure out what is the most fair thing to do. And so in Kamala Harris's case, Daily Mail talks about it. They say that she is descended from an owner who had 120 plus slaves. I, I mean, horrible history to this. I just don't know how much you can implicate her in this if this happened, you know, decades ago. Or not decades ago, this happened generations ago. Apparently, um, the great 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 grandfather ran a jamaican plantation and fought against the abolition of the of uh fought against the abolition of slavery this is according to a british historian and so kamala is of indian and they say quote unquote afro jamaican descent with her late mother shyamala gopalan born in Madras, now Chennai, while her father, Donald Harris, is from Jamaica. Now, her father is 85 years old, was born in Brownstown on the Caribbean island, named after Hamilton Brown, who is believed to be Kamala's great-great-great-great-grandfather who owned slaves. In an article published by the Jamaica Globe in 2019, Kamala's father, Professor Harris, wrote, My roots go back within my lifetime to my paternal grandmother, Miss Chrissy Descent Brown, descendant of Hamilton Brown, who is on record as plantation slave owner and founder of Brownstown, a town in Jamaica. They say uh, a northern Irish historian, Stephen McCracken, said today that Brown was a notorious slaver and a not nice fellow who was born in Antrim, but later settled in Jamaica. And so, uh, you know, it obviously is, you know, that it, that doesn't you know, you know, sit well with a lot of people. Uh, but it, is Kamala Harris complicit in it? Is she, you know, if we're talking reparations, does she, if her money that was inherited, that she inherited, uh, d does, do we turn that into reparations to individuals? Who we, uh, and, and how do you put a price? on how horrible slavery was and what it did. The rapes, the murders, 
the 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 beatings, the um, horrible work conditions, the starvations. So, you know, I I don't know if that's going to, you know, I, I mean, she she probably will address it, you know, and say I, you know, this is not. You know, something that my family is proud of. Uh, I wish I had been there to knock some sense into them and and abolish it and, and, you know, stop it myself. But I couldn't. And we are going to do our best to make sure that this never happens. You know, for future generations and future countries, slavery is is an evil that should never come back. I don't know. I mean, there's 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 things she could say or do. But for her to be. Uh, you know, blamed for it or or to be aligned with it. I just don't know how effective a message that's going to be. I think the last time her great, 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 great grandfather owned slaves was, or I think the, he owned about 121 back in 1826. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, not, not, not a good past. But, you know, a lot of us have family members and are when you come from a long line of descendants, I'm sure that many of us have somebody who did something bad, ended up in jail for something, did something that would not not be cool under any circumstances. I mean, look at Arnold Schwarzenegger, whose father served in the Nazi army. Now, I understand many people were forced into it, but, you know, do people call Schwarzenegger a Nazi because of what his father did? And so it, it, look, I understand bad, bad things happened to Jews, Christians, those of the LGBTQ AI plus community. They're still happening in Gaza. There are, you know, I, I mean, if, if somebody said that their, you know, uncle participated in the Hamas attack, but they, the, the Hamas massacre, but they, condemn it they don't that you know i'm not going to hold them responsible for something their uncle did and so i i think people are going to be talking about it more i think there's you know you always hear you know the ties to the and and sadly there were uh, i think somebody had said i can't confirm this but somebody had said that Woodrow wilson when he was younger had been a part of the kkk and and you you i, I can't confirm it but but there you know there are things that happen in the past and so if their relatives are around now you know, what what do they do how you know do they take the shame of what their former family members did that they many of you know you know when you're in a family it's it's not family in like the brady bunch sense it's you're doing stupid i don't agree with you i don't want anything to do with you Especially if it's something that happened before you were even born. And so, yes, it doesn't look good that somebody who is running with the hopes of being able to use that she is, quote, a candidate of color, unquote, which is how they're describing her now, has family with slave history. That's, you know, slave owner history. That's. It's not a good look, but I don't think that needs to be the primary focus. It's what has she done? What is she qualified to do? And what does she plan to do if she gets into office? That is, I think, on more people's minds. One eight seven seven Doctor Lee. Did you know that healthy arteries make a gas? Yes, actually, three known gases. Hi, I'm Dr. Mitch, and nitric oxide is a gas that's readily made all day long to keep our arteries open by relaxing the blood vessel walls. By doing this, our circulation is increased, bringing blood, oxygen, and nutrients to every part of your body. Both age and poor diet can lead to a loss of this precious gas and in turn blood pressure can go up energy can go down and you can get tingling in your hands and feet well our product ultimate nitric oxide can easily help fix this lack of nitric oxide go to totalwellness.com that's totalwellness.com where we are helping you to look good feel good and enjoy total wellness